learners, we are now back again in another exciting learning episode for English for academic and professional purposes. I am Mrs. Charisol John H. Casala, Teacher 3 from San Pablo City Science Integrated High School, Division of San Pablo City. In today's topic, you are going to determine ways on how you can elucidate on a concept. Since you already have a background idea of what a concept paper is, it is high time for you to practice your skills in expounding concepts that you will use in your paper. Before we start, make sure that you are in a comfortable place. Secure your copies of your ENPT modules or your learning activity sheets provided by your teacher. Make sure to have your answer sheets with you and a paper and pen for your taking. Here is our most essential learning competency. Determines the ways a writer can elucidate on a concept by definition, explication, and clarification. At the end of the video lesson, you are expected to determine the ways on how a writer can elucidate on a concept by concept of definition, concept of clarification, and concept of explication. Apply the learned ways and strategies to elucidate the given concepts. Propose a solution to a prevalent issue or problem in the Philippines through a sample infographic with the use of various concept elucidation techniques. I am sure that you are ready for a new lesson. Are you excited? Brilliant! Let's get started. Now, it's quizzes time! In this activity, all you need to do is to write the correct answer for each number by simply looking at the choices flashed on the screen. Are you ready? I will give you 10 seconds to get your paper and pen ready. Time starts now! Time's up! Let's see what you already know in this lesson. Question number 1. It allows you to broaden your definition by using analogy, metaphors, comparison and contrast, descriptions, analysis, functions, etymology, and semantic origin. The choices are extended definition, formal definition, concept by clarification, or concept by explication. The correct answer is extended definition. Let's now proceed with question. It allows you to define the term by giving the class where the word or term belongs and the characteristics that distinguish the term from other terms, known as differentia. Choices are extended definition, formal definition, concept by clarification, or concept by explication. The correct answer is formal definition. You got it correctly. Question number three. It is a summary of a research project written by a university student who is about to conduct certain research. Choices are concept by definition, concept by clarification, concept by explication, or concept paper. The correct answer is concept paper. Let's proceed with question number four. It clarifies the meaning of a word or a concept, and it also limits the scope of a particular word or concept. Choices are concept of definition, concept by clarification, concept by explication, or concept paper. The correct answer is concept by definition. You got it correctly. Question number five. It entails the analysis of the concept by looking at the examples and specifying some of its characteristics to arrive at one working definition used throughout the paper. Choices are concept by definition, by clarification, by explication, or concept paper. The correct answer is concept by clarification. Question number six. These types of papers ask you to explain something intangible, like love, patriotism, hate, or joy. Choices are concept by definition, 
concept by clarification, concept by explication, or concept paper. The correct answer is concept by explication. Well done! The ideas presented for each question will surely be discussed today. Let's now proceed with the lesson, shall we? Three ways a writer can elucidate a concept. Number one, concept by definition. Concept by definition is a mode of paragraph development which answers the questions, what is it? What does it mean? And what are its special features? The word to be defined may be an object, a person, a concept, a place, or a phenomenon. Let me share with you some techniques of definition. The first technique is what we call formal definition. In formal definition, you define the term by giving the class or category where the word or term belongs and the characteristics that distinguish the term from other terms, known as differential. Let's look at the first example. Vitamin E is a light yellow fat-soluble vitamin that acts as an antioxidant. You will notice that the term defined is vitamin E. The category of the term is a light yellow fat-soluble vitamin. Let's have another example. Biology is a branch of science that studies living organisms. The word being defined is biology. The category of the term is it's a branch of science. And the quality or characteristic is that it studies living organism. The second technique of definition is what we call extended definition. Extended definition is a detailed way of defining a term and is usually presented in one paragraph. This is needed to define abstract concepts. Extended definition incorporates various patterns of formal, informal, comparison and contrast, narration, description, classification, and cause and effect to explain a concept. To exemplify the cause and effect pattern of definition, let me read this sample paragraph. First described in 1907 by Alice Alzheimer, a German physician, Alzheimer's disease is an adult-onset neurological disorder of a known etiology, manifested by loss of memory, impaired thought processes, and abnormal behavior. When the illness begins before the age of 65, it is termed Alzheimer's disease. When onset is after 65, it is referred to as senile dementia of Alzheimer's type. So let's proceed to a guided practice. All you need to do is to identify the technique of definition used in this sentence. Love is deep, tender, ineffable feeling of affection and solstice toward a person, such as that arising from kinship, recognition of attractive qualities, or a sense of underlying oneness. What is the technique used in this sentence? You got it right! This is an example of extended definition since it talks about an abstract concept called love. Let's move forward to guided practice number two. The term is freedom, parts of speech is a noun, and the definition is the power or right to act, speak, or think as one one wants without hindrance or restraint. What do you think is the technique of definition used in this example? You got it right! It is evident that the term, defined, category, and quality are present in the example on the screen. Therefore, this perfectly shows a formal definition. The second way to elucidate a concept is through concept by explication. Concept by explication is a method of explanation in which sentences, verses, quotes, or phrases are taken from a literary or academic work or material, then interpreted and explained in a detailed way. For example, in the final stanza of his poem The Road Not Taken, Frost talks about his dilemma of coming upon two diverging paths and not knowing which one to choose. The third line is very important as it delivers an idea of choosing between two divergent paths. 
The tone in this stanza shifts from regretful to optimistic. The two roads represent individual choices. The mood is neither depressed nor unhappy, but the poet sighs because he knows what the complexities our life may have for him. Whether he has chosen a right or a wrong path, it has a compelling impact on his life. The phrase less traveled suggests the theme of individualism. This is an example of a detailed interpretation and explanation of an analysis for The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Number 3. Concept by Clarification Concept by Clarification is the last method of explanation in which the points are organized from general abstract concepts or ideas to specific and concrete examples. The analysis of the concept is done by looking at the examples thoroughly and specifying its characteristics. For example, justice is a broad concept which encompasses a wide set of ideas, most of which also branch into smaller notions. For instance, it can refer to the sentencing of a criminal based on due process. When an individual gets what he deserves, even outside the hands of the law, it is also considered justice in some context. This may come in the form of vigilante justice, in which a person dissatisfied with the system doles out punishing to wrongdoers. Poetic justice is also another related concept which is used in literature to show how the good is always rewarded while bad forces always meet a grim end. In the context of this paper, justice will be clearly delineated into any instance in which the law is successfully and fairly applied to an individual, resulting in either an arrest or a release. To illustrate, if a theft is caught and tried in a court through due process and is found to be guilty and then sentenced accordingly, it can be said that justice was served. However, if the same thief is caught in the act by a band of villagers and was beaten right then and there, it will be considered justice in the context of the paper, as the process has not undergone due process. If you will notice, the general idea of this example is justice. The specific and concrete examples under justice would be vigilante justice and poetic justice. If you will observe, most of its lines present detailed illustrations specific examples and characteristics for the given terms or for the three mentioned terms. And in the latter part of this example, it shows a clear clarification and a clear um, explanation of the points under justice. Let's answer activity number one. In this activity, you have to write a formal definition of the following terms. Number one, Netiquette. Number two, new normal. And number three, social media detox. Please write your formal definitions in your answer sheets. Let's now proceed with activity number two, Hate Me Not. Directions. Read the paragraph below and answer the questions that follow. Anger is having a feeling of hatred towards someone or something. It is one of our basic emotions and can be most dangerous if it is not carefully controlled. A person can become angry when he cannot fulfill some basic needs or desire that is important to him. For example, a child may become angry when he cannot play outside with his friends. An adult may become angry when he does not receive a raise in pay that he expected. Mentally, anger can interfere with our thoughts making it difficult to think clearly. To continue, physically, it may cause violent reactions in our muscles and in the nervous system. This causes an angry person to flush and tremble and to show other signs of disturbance. A person can be dangerous if he is in an angry mood because he can develop feelings of hostility and hatred toward another person which can then often turn violent. Answer the following questions in your answer sheets. Question number one. 
what concept is being explained in the above paragraph? Number two, what examples are given to explain the concept? Number three, do these examples reflect realities in life? And number four, in what way is the concept of the paragraph being explained? Now, it's time for you to apply what you've learned in today's lesson through this activity entitled Let's Solve It Together. You are hired as a project specialist who are well known to have the capacity to solve an issue or problem that the Philippines is currently facing. As geniuses in the field of finding the best solutions to the worst problems, you are tasked to devise a plan or a project that will clearly solve the issues at hand. Each team would have to identify a prevalent issue that is currently faced by the Filipinos that needs solving. Make sure to be very detailed in defining, explaining, and clarifying your conceptualized solutions or plan. Be prepared to apply the three ways on how you can elucidate the concept in your oral presentation and present your creative infographic of your desired solution by putting the following. Here are the following ideas that you need to include in your performance task. Letter A, project title or your concept. B, definition of the project or proposed solution. Letter C, what are the reasons and purposes in conducting the project? And letter D, how will the plan or project be carried out to solve the underlying issue in the Philippines? Here is the criteria for marking. Quality of concept with the use of various concept elucidation techniques, 30 points. Presentation, 15 points. Creativity and style of infographic, 25 points. Organization of ideas, 20 points. Collaboration and teamwork, 10 points, with a total score of 100 points. Good luck, students. I hope that you will be able to finish this activity. It's time for reflection. Let's accomplish the 3 2, 1 important things activity, where you are to complete the following statements. The three important things I learned for today's lesson are the two things I realized in today's lesson are and the one important thing that I pledge to share to others is write your reflections in your activity sheets. And that ends our lesson for today. Truly, time runs so fast when we enjoy learning. I'm sure that you have learned new things, especially on how you can illuminate, explain, and clarify concept. Once again, I'm Teacher Cha. And see you all tomorrow for another interesting lesson in English for academic and professional purposes. Thank you for listening.